for Lesson 7E, What's My Credit Score? We're moving from federal budgets to personal budgets. Recall that the FICO score is used to determine how much money you can borrow and how much in interest you will pay. And let me do my mark. Why don't I do this earlier? I don't know, but here we go. Question one, which of the statements below would be most likely to affect your credit score in a positive way? Why? Just like normal, if you haven't already paused and answered this question and even looked through the objectives and the rest of the questions, this is a great time to hit pause and do that. And then when you go to answer question one, even to talk to people around you, your kids, family members, roommates, and find out what they think on which of the statements would be most likely to affect your credit score in a positive way. Hit pause, answer something on question one, and I'll see you back at the objectives. So on question one, all of the things that are referenced there can impact your FICO score positively. The objectives for this lesson are that we're going to understand this thing called a debt to income ratio and how that can affect or the effect of those ratios on your credit score and, and the effect of those ratios on your credit score and ability to manage debt you're gonna be able to calculate this DTI ratio and draw conclusions from it about the appropriateness of the percentage of income spent on housing and on debt. We're gonna do some thinking, we're gonna do some algebra, we're gonna do some calculations, and we're gonna make some conclusions on all of this. In preview assignment 70, you were introduced to the FICO credit score and debt to income ratios, DTI. In this lesson, we will focus on taking out and paying back loans. We will begin with DTI ratios used to determine a person's ability to manage and pay back debt. Question two says, jot down what you remember about debt to income ratios from the previous assignment. Again, if you haven't already hit pause, hit pause, at least go do questions two and three. And there is a chart in there to look at and underline and think on I'll see you back at the chart in question three. Looking at this information, it is information you will need to memorize for our next test. There are some pieces and parts missing and that'll give us a chance to fill in some blanks, but beginning at the top, that debt to income ratios are used to determine a person's ability to obtain a mortgage. Most lenders examine front end and back end DTI to determine about buyer suitability for a mortgage loan. Let's start by looking at front end DTI. Front end DTI, you need to memorize front end DTI. I don't have everything up here, but I'm gonna write in housing payments. Housing payments in the numerator, denominator would be total income. Housing refers to rent or mortgage payments. We're gonna to need to keep them in the same unit, either month to month or a year to a year, but we need to keep them the same, same unit. Back end DTI, a little bit more. It's all recurring debt payments, all recurring still divided by the total income, but a different number. And recurring debts are going to, they're also going to include the rent and the mortgage, but you're gonna to have to add in car payments, student loans, credit card, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Here's another piece of information. You do not have to memorize this, but we will be using it in our lesson today. According to bank rate, your front end DTI should not exceed 28%, so it needs to be less than or equal to 28%. Your back end DTI should not exceed 36%, so it should be less than or equal to 36%. Take a second to look at these again, and then if you haven't done question three, go ahead and work through it, and I'll meet you there to walk through it with you. So on question three, suppose you want to move out of your apartment and buy a small house so that you can claim a deduction for the mortgage interest on your tax return. 
let's assume your income is thirty-six thousand, excuse me, thirty-nine thousand six hundred dollars per year. Your student loans are two hundred fifty a month, and your car payment is three hundred twenty-five per month. So even as I'm reading these, be looking back at front end and back end DTIs to see where these would go. Where would you put your total income? Where would the student loans go? Where would the car payment go? You only use your credit card and for gas and payoff is about 100 monthly. Where would that one go? You use an online payment calculator to determine that the house payment will be about 725 a month. Round your answers to the nearest whole percentage point where necessary. Here we go with front end DTI. When I look back at the charts, or if you've already memorized, front end DTI is going to have housing over your total income. Again, I like to write words. I like to see what we're doing, and that helps me know what to put where. Housing over total. But housing is by month. The total is by year. I cannot compare months and years. I've got to either put them both as years or both as months. I'm going to go ahead and leave my home, my housing, my payment for my mortgage as $725 per month. That means I need to go to my $39,600 that is an annual salary and divide it by 12 months. When I divide $39,600 by 12, I get $3,300 is my income per month. Soak this up. <laughs> Make yourself some notes, jot what we're writing down, what we're not writing down. And I'm going to go ahead and divide my 725 by the 3300. I'm going to multiply by 100, 100 to get it to a percentage. And I've got 21 and it says round answers to the nearest whole percentage point. Well, my screen is 21.9696. So the nearest whole percentage point means I'm going to be at 22%. They also want us to calculate the back end. If you haven't already tried this, hit pause and then try this and then come back. My back end DTI, I'm going to have the same denominator. My income goes there. And again, I've got to, I've got to keep it the same unit, like month by month or year by the year. And then when I look at my front or back end DTI, when I go back and look at the definition or if I've already memorized it, it's all recurring debt payments. So I have a student loan, I have a car payment, I have a credit card, a gas credit card, and house payment needs to get included in all of this too. So I'm gonna add up my $250, my $325, my $100, and my $725, and I'm getting I must have hit a wrong number because there's not a two. I ended up with 1402. Let's try this again. $250 plus $325 plus $100 plus $725. Oh, much better. I ended up with $1,400. When I divide by the 3,300 and multiply by 100, and they want me to round to the nearest whole percentage, I've got 42 dot 42 42 42 on my screen so to the nearest whole percentage i'm looking at 42 percent so my front end dti is at 42 percent my back end dti is 22 percent part c is it likely that the bank is going to loan us money for the house let's go back to that chart earlier it said that my front end dti does not need to exceed 28 percent on my front end DTI, I had 22, and that is less than 28%. So that's a check mark. The other thing that the article said is my back end DTI should not exceed 36. So my back end has to be 36 or less. Well, my 42% is greater. And so this one, may not be a positive from the bank so they may loan they may not they may ask us to find a cheaper home they may say pay off your student loans first they may give us some alternatives so it's within reach 
but maybe with some adjustments. Part D, what should your total monthly income or my totally monthly for that? What should your total monthly payments be to keep you in line with the correct back end DTI limit stated by the bankrate.com? I need to scoot up and get a little bit more space to write here. That that asked a whole lot of questions there, a whole lot of stuff going on. So let's get a brand new color. And it says, so what's my total monthly payment going to need to be to keep me in line with the back end DTI? Did I read the right one? Tell me the back end, back end DTI. So the back end DTI is the one with all recurring debts and where are we? Ah, here we are. Back end DTI. I need to skip back up. That's the problem. So in the back end DTI right here, this was too high. So the question is, what should my total monthly payments be to keep me in line with this 36%? So my question mark is total monthly payments. So let's call that X. So now we're not talking 1400 anymore. We're talking about what in the world do I need so that when I divide by 3300, it's going to equal this 0.36 that I need. Looking at this number, I'm going to change colors. And to solve for the unknown, I'm going to need to multiply both sides by 3300. I'm going to grab a calculator and my X is going to end up being whatever 36, 36 hundredths times 3300 is. 0. 0.36 times 3300 and I'm ending up with 0. that my total, oh sorry again, that my total monthly payments right here are going to need to be 1,001, oh, I don't know what that was, are going to need to be $1,188 to be able to stay in with the back end DTI. How much lower should my house payment be to stay within this limit? I'm going to change color one more time. This $1,188 includes my house payment. I don't know what that is. It includes my student loans. It includes car payment. It includes the gas credit card, and that's it, right? Loans, gas, car, and the unknown of housing. So I'm gonna add all of these together and then subtract them from both sides. Grabbing calculator once again. I get 250 plus 325 plus 100, and I get that, another color, my 1188 is X plus $675. So I now need to take the 675 off of the right-hand side and off of the left-hand side, and then I'm going to come up with the fact that 1188 minus $675, my house payment to stay within this, which one were we looking at? The back end DTI to keep it at 36% or less, my house payment cannot go over $513. Before you hit pause and go to do questions four and five, this one starts by saying, use one of the free online loan calculators listed below or search for your own to answer questions four and five. I want you to go ahead and make sure you don't use this one. It is not working. And you can search for your own. I'm also gonna write down another one that I like to use, and that's the one I'm gonna work through the examples four and five with. So you can search for your own right now, or you can go ahead and join me at question four, and I'll show you the link that I want to use and where I'm gonna go down into the link to find some numbers to answer four and five. So this is the website that I have found. It's, as, you, as you see at the top, it's the HTTPS 
colon forward slash forward slash brownmath.com forward slash bsci forward slash loan dot htm number sign excel. You can always hit pause, type this in. And I'm going to go down here to Excel workbooks and then loan solution. And it's going to drop several in down here. And when it drops them in, I want you to notice there are tabs at the bottom. The tabs at the bottom, that's what I'm going to use for question number four that's saying number of payments. So with question number four, I'm going to make this larger. Question number four, it says after four years of college, let's assume you owe $30,000. So that's what I want to put here. $30,000 is what I owe. Payment per period. How long is it going to take to pay off these loans if I'm going to pay $200 a month? The interest per year on number four is 3.8% interest. And then the number of payments, it says I'm going to do 200 per month, so I'll make 12 payments a year. When I hit return, it tells me right here that my total number of payments for question number four would be 204 months, but it wants this in years. So I'm going to take my 204 months, divide it by 12, and I get exactly 17 years. So looking at question number four, using this calculator, it's going to take 17 years to pay off this loan. I'm going to go on to question number five. On question number five, I'm going to go to the bottom tab, Payment Amount, and I want to click on that one. On question five, it says, if after four years of college you owe $30,000 in student loans that charge 3.8% interest, how much would you have to pay monthly to pay off the loan in five years? So the loan amount, again, is $30,000. The interest per year is 3.8%. Payments per year, monthly. So we're going to do 12. And then the total payments, the question here is how long or how much how much am I going to have to pay per, per month to pay this off in five years? So five years times 12 months, that's 60 payments that I'm willing to do. When I hit return down at the payment amount, it says for all of this to take place, I would need to pay about $549.79 or around $550 per month. This concludes Lesson 7E. You definitely have some homework to go do, but look at your calendar to see if you have any more assignments that are due this week. I'll see you at another lesson very soon.